how to convert the equation of a line from point slope form, which you can see over here, to standard form. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to look at the equation of a line like this and rewrite it in standard form. Okay, so I guess um, the first thing that we want to maybe do is observe the difference between point slope and standard form. What uh, One of the things that hopefully jumps out to you about standard form is the final equation has a number on the right side. What I circled was just the general form of standard form, but a standard form equation could look something like this. 3x plus 2y equals 11. So you know you're in standard form if you have a constant or just a number on the right side, and you have the x and y terms on the left side. And as you can see with point slope form, we've got variables on both sides. We've got the y on one side, the x on the other. We've got numbers all over the place. So the first step that you should do, and there are many ways to go about it, but I'm going to recommend as your first step, step number one, is to distribute the slope. In point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This m here is the slope. So let's distribute that number out. And you'll see that this gets us closer to our goal. Right? So distribute it's 3 times x and then 3 times net minus 4. So it becomes minus 12. Now, what we want to do is we want to get the numbers all on one side and the variables on the other. So let's do the numbers first. Let's um, uh, add 5 to both sides. And you end up with y equals 3x minus 7. Um, and now that we have the, the numbers all on the right side, let's get all the letters, or the x's and y's on the other. And we can do that by s subtracting 3x from both sides. So you have y minus 3x equals 7. So step one was to distribute the slope, and step two was to get the, let me just mark that off there, get the numbers on one side, variables on the other. Variables on other. And we did that by adding the 5 to both sides to get the numbers on the right and subtracting the 3x to get the numbers on the left. I mean, you could have done it in another order. You could have first moved the x to the left side and the 5 to the other, but in the end, you end up in the same place. So let's try um, another problem. Let's try y minus 7 equals 1 half of um, x minus 7. Eight. Okay, so step number one, distribute the slope, and you have y minus 7 equals 1 half x minus 1 half of 8, which is really y minus 7 equals 1 half x minus 4. And if you remember, what we did next was we got the numbers on one side, the variables on the other, and I'm going to put the numbers on the right side, like the last problem, but you could do it with the numbers on the other side, but let's put the numbers on the right side. Negative 7 plus 7 is y equals 1 half x plus 3. Now, remember, we also get have to get the variables on the other side, so let's subtract 1 half x from both sides, and you end up with y minus 1 half x equals 3. Now, sometimes teachers will say that you have to express it in standard form with integer coefficients, meaning that the coefficient before y and x must be a whole number. And if you had to do that, um, and this number 3 again is like if, it depends on if your teacher asks you or if you just like it that way. If you need to have it as integer coefficients, you want to multiply by the GCF of the coefficients. 
uh, of the greatest common denominator of the coefficients if they're fractions, right? Um, there's not always a steadfast rule for this third step because it kind of depends on what your equation looks like. But if we want integer coefficients, we should, we really need to deal with this one half, right? So we can multiply both sides by two, and you end up with two y minus, remember two times one half is one, so minus x equals two times three or six. So again, this third one is if you need integer coefficients, then at least for this equation, we just needed to multiply the by um, the denominator of one half. It can get a little more complicated. If, okay, let's try to do the same thing to these two equations here. Let's try to convert y plus five equals negative two times x minus seven to standard form, and then the one on the right will also try to convert. And by the way, if you are interested in, in more practice problems, um, check out mathwarehouse.com slash line. There's a bunch of other uh, worksheets with answer keys and goodies on that website um, that'll help you understand this. So remember, step one is to distribute slope. And our slope is right here. So we need to distribute this negative two to both of these guys. Right? So you end up with y plus five equals a negative two x Negative 2 times negative 7 is positive 14. That's a 14. Um, and then our goal is to get numbers on one side, variables on the other. And I've been taking the numbers to the right side. So f let's do that for consistency's sake. Uh, y equals negative 2x plus 14 minus 5 equals plus 9. And then I've been taking the x's to the left side. In this case, we have to add 2x to both sides to get y plus 2x equals 9. And we're done. This, um, even if your teacher, like I said, wanted you to have a, uh, a final standard form equation that has integer coefficients, we're good. And it's in standard form because we have our constant or our number on the right side and our x and y terms on the other side. Okay, let's finish up with one last problem. I moved it to a separate blank page so we'd have room to write on it. Um, let's convert y minus 3 equals 1 third x plus 12 into standard form. And you know the deal. Step 1 is to distribute the 1 third. So we end up with y minus 3 equals 1 third x plus 12 over 3 which becomes y minus 3 equals 1 third x plus 4. From there, remember, we want to get the numbers on one side, variables on the other. So let's uh, stay consistent, and I'll take the number 3 and take it to the right side. So we end up with y equals 1 third x plus 7. Now let's bring the x term to the left side by subtracting 1 third x from both sides. So we end up with y minus 1 third x equals 7. Now, now, like we said, this is actually in standard form. We have the x and y terms on one side. We have a constant on the other. And let's do the optional final step of writing the equation with integer coefficients. To get, we need to get rid of this one third. And to do that, we can multiply both sides of the equation by three. Right, so we end up with three y minus x, because you get three times negative one third is minus one, equals 21. And that's it. Our equation is now in standard form. If you'd like more practice on this problem, feel free to visit mathwarehouse.com slash line. Thanks a lot.